I'd like to introduce the questions from the reviewers and the community and our answers to those questions. First, what is the bottleneck of the field of view and eye box and how to improve them? In holographic glasses, the field of view is determined by the size of the SLM and the eye relief. The bigger SLM creates bigger field of view, of course, and the shorter eye relief also provides a bigger field of view because it can bring the SLM closer to the eye. By the way, the static eye box is decided by the pixel pitch of the SLM and also the eye relief. Smaller pixel pitch creates larger diffraction angle and it is helpful for the bigger static eye box. However, unlike field of view case, the shorter eye relief reduces the static eye box because the traveling distance is getting shorter. So the overall field of view eye box bandwidth is totally determined by the pixel number, which is identical to the space bandwidth product in a conventional holographic display. So if we make a holographic glasses with a 15 mm SLM with a 4 micrometer pixel pitch and 15 mm eye relief, we can get a 120 degree field of view and 2 mm eye box. This means we need a 12.5K phase-only SLM, and that's why it is still a research prototype, probably for 10 years later. Second, what happens when the diffracted lights meet the waveguide again? The grating will couple some light back into the waveguide because of the reciprocity based on the diffraction efficiency, which is designed to be low. So most of the light passes through the waveguide, and that's why we can observe outside views in waveguide-based AR displays. The remaining uncoupled light forms a holographic image. Third, what are the requirements of the pupil measurement for the correct pupil HOGD algorithm? The pupil HOGD algorithm requires pupil diameter for the optimized phase generation. That means we have to extract the user's pupil diameter in real time. As shown in the right graph, the pupil HOGD algorithm always shows the, a better image quality as long as the pupil measurement error is less than 0.5 mm. Further, the pupillary light reflex is a function of the intensity of the light that falls on the retina. Therefore, we can pre-calibrate the user's pupillary light reflex and use that information to calculate the user's pupil based on the scene brightness. Especially because the pupil HUGD algorithm is quite robust to the error, we can directly use this calculated pupil diameter for the phase generation without worrying too much about image degradation. Last question, why is the wearable prototype image quality so bad? To answer this question, let's go back to this diagram. The beam splitter in a conventional holographic display system gives you a nearly plane wave, which is good because we don't have to think about the input phase profile. However, theoretically, we actually don't need a plane wave to form a holographic image. As long as the difference between the shortest path and the longest path is smaller than the coherence length, the leftmost pixel and the rightmost pixel can interfere with each other. However, due to the path difference over the grading, the output beam should have a scrambled phase profile. So our idea was to take advantage of this small form factor of the waveguide illumination and somehow correct this phase by using a Carmander loop optimization. Well, the result was very bad compared to the benchtop prototype, but please note that this is the first holographic image in history with the completely scrambled phase illumination. Further, the mismatch between the waveguide grading and the coherent light source also degrades the image quality substantially. So I'd like to claim that this is a good starting point, not a limitation of this design. So how can we improve the image quality of holographic glasses? Maybe our other paper can give you guys some intuition. In holographic glasses, we used a simple Carmander loop optimization, not a full Carmander loop model training. Um, the image quality of holographic displays is determined by the correctness of calculation these days. So an identical holographic display setup, which has the same laser, same SLM, same optics, can provide a completely different image quality as shown in this example. As our conventional benchtop prototype can show this much image quality, 3D capability, and correct out-of-focus blur with the Chimera loop model training, so I believe we can get a very good image quality with a glasses form factor in the near future. I believe this holographic glasses project shows that better computation can not only improve the image quality, but also can completely redesign the display. 
not sure how far we can go with the computational display technologies, but I think this is a very exciting moment for the display community in general. So let's see what happens. Thank you.